Hello there. Today's video is going to be installing a lamp on a uh, on a uh, Linux machine. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, I'm running Ubuntu 14.04 and uh, I'm going to do this through command line because I am a sadist. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is check for updates. So sudo apt get update and we need to put in our password. When you run uh, Linux, you never run as root, which is the uh, the administrative account, the ultimate administrative account. Um, so that's why I have to put in my password when I run that command. Um, so sudo apt-get update. I guess I did it kind of fast. Sorry. Um, come on, Ubuntu. Uh, let's go and open up a uh, get it. I think I've got get it on here. G edit. Yeah, text editor. Uh, usually I go with Sublime, but um, this is a clean install. Uh, so LAMP, L-A-M-P, which stands for uh, Linux. How are we doing? Oh, there we go. Uh, sudo apt get upgrade. We did update before. This time will be upgrade. And it says zero new installed, zero to remove, three not upgraded. You will likely get a yes, uh, an option to yes or no, and decide whether or not to install. Let me show you what that looks like. So, uh, sudo apt get install task cell, which is a program called task selector, and then it says yes. Uh, would you like to continue? It says after this, 11 megabytes will be used, um, seven to be installed, zero to be upgraded zero to remove, uh, three not upgraded, those are probably Linux kernels. Um, so, yeah, for some reason this command line doesn't always pull them all up. So we're going to have, yes, continue. Um, Alright, so back to the text editor. Linux is a operating system freely available for anybody to download and use. Uh, Apache, so Linux is kind of like a free if you're, you know, most people are going to run either Windows or Macintosh, iOS, uh, Linux is free and created by people to use for free. So um, it's very popular for work, but not very popular on your desktop. If you have an Android phone, that's actually a version of Linux. Ubuntu is a version of Linux based off of Debian or Debian. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but all right. So Apache is a program used to host web pages. MySQL is a program used to host databases. Um, it's a database language, whatever. PHP um, is a famous language used for uh, building web pages. Uh, WordPress uses PHP. It's a it's a descendant of HTML, which is the original web page language. Blah blah blah. Uh, altogether, L A M P is LAMP. So you'll often see things defined as a LAMP stack, um, and that it means that it's going to have these four programs on there and you can use it to host web pages. So we're going to do this on a desktop so you can have a uh, testing environment on your your desktop computer so you can build web pages. It's what I use to make videos a lot. All right, so we're back to the command line and uh, let's go over those two commands I did. sudo, which means super user do. You're not signed in as the the root user, the ultimate admin, so you have to put the sudo command in front of a lot of commands. Uh, apt is the name of the program that Debian used, or Debian, I can't remember which one it is. Um, that apt used to upgrade stuff. So when you see a program like apt get, that is a program used to update the machine. And then when I did the update, I was updating just to see if there were updates. And then the upgrade to go ahead and upgrade them. And then uh, then I did the install, which means go ahead and install the program that I specify, which is task cell. All right, so we'll get rid of that. All right, so we're going to do a uh, task. Actually, I probably need to uh, sudo task cell because we're going to install some stuff. And we've got this cool little box here. You can do an up and down arrow on the keyboard to go up and down. Press the space bar to select things. You can see that the asterisk there appears and reappears. Uh, we're going to do basic Ubuntu server, open SSH, uh, lamp server. There it is. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to hit tab to go to the OK box. You can see that the OK box down here is now highlighted. So go ahead and hit the space bar. 
or enter I think will work as well all right so we're gonna wait on that uh, one thing you're gonna notice there are a lot of passwords um, there will be lots of passwords because in this type of environment there is not what's called single uh, sign on meaning that uh, you get one password and it rules everything in a Linux environment you often get one password that um, for each service that you're using oh here we go password for my SQL root user uh, so at this point we now have a password for um, logging into the computer and a password for the MySQL databases um, later on we'll have one for a program called PHP my admin um, but you get that single sign-on option um, although lots of Linux machines can have a single sign-on through a program called Samba uh, that's probably more technical than you care to know uh, but there will be lots of passwords there'll be a password for logging into the computer one for uh, logging into my SQL and one for PHP my admin I think that's the capitalization on that so all right enough of this run in the mouth I'm gonna pause the video because you don't need to watch a progress bar that's kinda pointless okay so when that guy finishes it just closes and it brings you right back to the command line so we're gonna also uh, sudo apt git install PHP my admin and this is a program used to manage your MySQL databases so yes and it's gonna ask for another password uh, so first it's gonna ask if we're gonna use Apache or light just hit the spacebar on Apache so it shows the asterisks hit tab to go to OK and hit the spacebar again okay so this video uh, now shows um, it wants to configure the PHP my admin with DB config common so hit spacebar on oops let's try that again yeah on yes now it needs to know the password of the database administrative user that's going to be your MySQL uh, username which I had to put in a now we need to do a password for PHP my admin to use on um, to use on my SQL uh, if you don't put anything in it'll just go to a random one uh, I like to know what it is though and of course you have to put it in twice when you put in new passwords and uh, it's working on it so let's pause the video again here. Oh, there we go. So it just wrapped up. Um, so now let's go ahead and install uh, an FTP program. Actually, let's look at it first. Um, where's my Firefox? Firefox. Uh, so we can see where some of this stuff's going into play. Oi. Come on, Firefox. Thank you. It should say, uh, yep, it works. By default, usually the Apache page says that it works. Uh, Localhost slash PHP my admin will show the login for PHP my admin. Let's make a database while we're here. Might as well. There we go. Uh, so this is the login for PHP my admin. I'm going to do a uh, root because that's pretty much the only user here now and we're gonna make a new database actually we're gonna make a new user as well uh, so let's scroll down add a new user and I guess I have to scroll back up there we go username is gonna be uh, WP1 host is going to be local password 
we'll go with that. It's a horrible password. I think eventually you'll see it. Uh, you can generate it automatically. And we're going to create a database. Get, get rid of that. Thank you. Get a database with the same name and grant all privileges. Scroll down. There's a go button here somewhere. Yeah, go. Uh, quit asking me that. All right, so it says I've added a new user. There's my database. All right, so um, let's install an FTP program because I like to do an FTP program just to emulate um, what, uh, like I'm working on a real server. So sudo apt git install vsftpd which is very secure FTP daemon. Uh, FTP is a file transfer protocol. That's what it stands for. It's a protocol that actually outdates the internet um, and it allows you to put your files when you build a little web page that you can put on your server. So, Because you can't just have people just drive by in your house and look at it. So when you have a server, you have to have some way of getting it up there um, on, on the server. Text editor. And that is FTP, which stands for file transfer protocol. Uh, another option would be to use Git, which is uh, programs exclusively for Linux. Uh, FTP generally works on any operating system. You can probably get Git on your television if you really wanted to, or FTP on your television if you really wanted to. But Git is typically a, a Linux thing because it was invented by the guy who created Linux. All right, so we've got uh, VSFTP installed. Let's go ahead and change to the uh, to the directory where the website is installed by doing a cd var dub 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 there you will find a directory called html uh, I'm going to change to html as well and then there you'll find a program uh, page called index.html let's clear that out um, index.html I'm going to move that because by default um, Apache looks for a file called index.html. We're going to change it to index. Oh, it's because I'm not sudoing. Uh, sudo move index.html to index.a.html. And when I do that, before it showed that it works, now it shows index A. All right, so we know we're in the right directory, uh, which is pwd, present working directory, var dub 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 slash html right there oh. you can see it right there var dub 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 slash html all right so we got to do some permissions here so we're going to do a cd dot dot because uh because i wasn't able to move this file uh no one else is going to either so let's do an ls dash al so that we can see it ls will list all the files a will uh show all the files even the hidden ones and l will do in the long format which is like this all right, so you can see that this has a directory right here for uh, the D stands for directory, RWX for read, write, execute, R-X for read and execute, R-X for uh, read-X. Let's go ahead and copy this. Control Shift C should do it. There we go. Um, so this part here it says that this is a directory that's what that bit says right there directory uh, you're also going to have your user assigned to this which is root and your group which is assigned as root in Linux you frequently have a user and a group with the same name and the only person in that group is that user um, this is the name of the file uh, this is the time it, it was created and uh, this has to do with the size. So um, I'm going to get rid of all of this so you can explain, so I can explain what what this sort of thing is. Um, this RWX business. RWX is the permissions, which means that you have read, write, and execute. And these are the permissions of the owner of the file. In this case, that is the uh, root. And then you're going to have the group associated with the file, which is the group called root. And then the uh, others which is not um, anything to do with lost. It has to do with pretty much anybody that's not in the owner of the group. Um, so there are several permissions available. There's read, write, and execute. 
and then of course you've got read and execute and uh, you could have read and write with no execute whatever uh, if you stick a one wherever there's a permission allowed and a zero where permissions not allowed you get something like that these are binary numbers one 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 in binary is equal to seven in decimal one zero one is equal to five in decimal one one zero is equal to six in decimal these are called octal permissions because there are eight different number combinations available in this uh, this sort of thing so whenever you see me later on do a uh, chmod change modify 775 on a particular file that means uh, 7 7 5 will be 111 111 101 which will be read write execute read write execute read and execute yeah binary shows up a lot when you start doing computer stuff so you better start learning it now because one day you're gonna need that stuff alright so let's do a pseudo chone which is to change ownership uh, recursively meaning all the files in the HTML directory to your name and you can see your name right there because you're going to want write permissions to this folder technological uh, colon www-data which is the user that um, Apache uses to do stuff so uh, var um, dub, 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 HTML. Now, if I do an ls dash al, you can see my name and dub, dub, dub data. All right, so we'll both be able to have write ability to it. Uh, so let's do a cd. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. sudo chmod. 775 dash var dub 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 html which means we're doing the proper permissions that I explained a minute ago and sudo chmod g plus s oh, g plus s group plus sticky uh, var dub 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 html uh, what that will do is it will whatever gets stuck in that directory will always have the www-data group if you don't do that you're gonna get a file permission you're gonna get a write permission issue later on we do um, WordPress because WordPress won't be able to run so let's do a CD var www HTML and we're gonna check the umask umask is the permissions assigned let's clear that because I always hate a busy screen uh, umask is the permissions assigned to this folder it is 775 so um, typically umask are three digits so in this case it would actually be 002 um, which you take from 777 777 uh, minus 002 equals 775 so umask is the opposite of whatever the permissions are so whenever you set the umask you say look this is what I want the permissions to be of whatever I drop in this directory alright so uh, umask is correct uh, we need to fix the uh, FTP settings so that FTP will work uh, sudo vim vim is a text editor available for um, for Linux now um, uh, for years it typically doesn't come with the desktop Ubuntu but it installed it when we installed the server you can just as easily do get it if that's your bag but I figure you should be exposed a little bit to Vim um, Etsy VSFT PD dot conf hmm oh because I have it wrong uh, colon Q to quit um, because I mistyped Etsy etc vsftpd.conf I got out of there by hitting the escape key on the keyboard 
and then colon Q which we'll go over in a minute so if you're stuck right now just hang on all right so I'm gonna hit the up and down arrow and we're gonna go down to local enable yes that is enabled you can tell by the way that it's a different color um, and then we need to write enable so let's go ahead and hit the insert mode now you're gonna to want to watch the bottom corner of the screen here when I hit the insert key it says oh now I'm in insert mode which means I can start writing stuff go ahead and hit the backspace get rid of that hashtag or pound sign in front of it uh, local U mask let's go ahead and fix the local U mask as well by changing it to zero 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 two and uh, that's pretty much all we need to do let's go ahead and hit the escape key on the keyboard and that gets rid of insert mode so there's insert mode and then I hit the escape key and I'm out so if I do a colon write that will write to the file now for example if I do a bunch of gibberish in here and then I just hit colon Q that will quit the file and it'll freak out because I did not save my changes so if I want to quit it and not save my changes in other words I want Vim to do this command that I require I hit the exclamation afterwards and there we go we're out um, and you can see that gibberish I typed in is not there alright so let's go ahead and get out of there colon Q and um, let's restart the um, the service so uh, sudo service vsftpd restart and it should be good let's do a sudo apt-get install file Zilla that's a FTP program yes I would like to continue thank you very much so you're gonna have two sides to the FTP program the server that will accept the connection that's gonna hold all your files and the client version which will um, allow you to connect to the server the desktop version basically um, I've got a few programs open here let's close close without saving still have FileZilla open or I mean uh, Fox, Firefox how's my terminal doing alright let's pause this while FileZilla installs okay so here we are we're back to the command prompt uh, I'm going to change directories. Let's clear. Oops. And we're going to do a cd tilde to my home directory to downloads. And we're going to do a uh, wget of uh, http colon slash slash wordpress.org slash latest dot zip. Yeah, there we go. So there's the latest WordPress download it. Let's do an unzip. All right, so we'll do an ls-al. Should be a WordPress directory in here. There is. All right, we'll use that in a minute. Um, I want to also install another program here. So let's do a wget. Actually, we can make this a lot more quick. Uh, let's do a web min Google search for web min. And this is just a web interface. It's kind of like a free cPanel. So let's uh, Debian package. Let's right click on that and um, copy link location. And we're going to do a wget control shift V. 1.690 that's important to remember and that's going to be a, a moment to download I always get a little excited I could have done it through the GUI but it always excites me to see that little progress bar in the uh, command prompt in terminal alright so let's go ahead and install this uh, webmin interface so we'll do an HTTP Oh wait, sorry. Sudo dpackage. Let's clear this. 
sudo dpkg, which means dpackage dash install um, dot slash webmin. And it's going to break. It's going to break. Breaks every time. I've never had it not break. Um, but that's fine. It's easy to fix. So it's going to say it's unpacking webmin. Um, you don't need to watch like a progress bar. I'm going to pause this. Okay, so finally, this guy is done, uh, but it says errors were encountered, so that's a problem. So let's go ahead and do a uh, sudo apt get dash f upgrade. Forgot what the uh, what the switch is. So that'll fix all of our errors. Yes, hit Y, hit enter. Um, do I still have, oh, that's desktop. Local host. All right, so this is going to take a minute. I'm going to pause the video again. Okay, so at this point, we are now uh, rolling. Let's do a FileZilla. That should open up the FileZilla client. We should be able to... Uh, actually, it should have given us a message. Where's my terminal? Um, yeah, here we go. That's the, uh, that's the address that we're looking for, for the, um, and we got to do a HTTPS. Firefox is going to freak out. Yes, I understand this. So now I can log in as um, luckily I don't have to have another password for this. That's nice. Um, but there you go. And it'll tell you, oh, 12 package updates are available. So I can click this and install my package updates. Update selected packages. Blah, blah, blah. We're just going to leave this alone. Let's go back to localhost. And we're going to run some FileZilla. FileZilla, localhost, username is uh, technological, my password. And we're going to connect. Sure. Remember the password. Directory listing successful. Very good. We're going to go to. Um, home I believe it is home yep technological these are the files over here that are technically on my desktop over here would be the files that you would see on the server although technically the server is the desktop so uh, we're gonna go for downloads which is right there I've got WordPress I'm gonna rename this WP1 we're gonna go to var Dub, dub, dub. HTML. Now, I could move this stuff manually, but it's always more fun to do it in FileZilla. And it looks like it worked. Sometimes I mess up the uh, permissions issue, and I don't have write permissions, but it looks like it's good. And if that works, then I'm likely going to be able to install WordPress. So that's nice as well. Uh, if I refresh, it'll automatically show. Yeah, there's the WP1 directory. Oh, and it says all transfers are finished. So let's go ahead and hit that. We can close um, FileZilla. Oh, no configuration file. Good. So we're going to create a configuration file, uh, database name and username. We made that earlier in PHP my admin. So username is uh, WP1. 
password is horrible. It is at SSW0RD. In case you ever wonder what I use in these videos, that's typically what I use. It's terrible. You should never use a password that simple. Let's go ahead and hit submit. Oh wait, did it? Database host, username, password, table prefix, database name. Oh, missed that. WP1, WP1. The username was the same thing. Go ahead and hit submit. There we go. Go ahead and run the install and um, site title, test website, username. Uh, it's going to be the same horrible password. Yes, I know it's very weak. Um, we're going to put a fake email address in here. Uh, we don't want Google to find this one though. Go ahead and install WordPress. Sure, why not? Remember that password. So at this point, if you reach a problem where it says it can't write, it's because you've got the file permissions wrong. I'd advise to go back and re-watch that bit. Um, you did not assign the proper permissions when I was doing right after I did the FTP install. Um, come on, WordPress, a little faster. There we go. So it says it works. Let's go ahead and log in. And there's WordPress. And there's the back end. So now you've got a little test server that you could play with and do whatever you like to with it and um, you know practice before you upload it to your website so thank you very much for watching if you've enjoyed the experience of this tutorial why not share it with your friends